Hey guys, welcome to The Bulwark. I'm here with a special guest, honestly, very special to me on a personal level and a professional one. Uh, it's Will Summer of the Washington Post. Will, you're a, what, media reporter? Is that your title? Yes, I'm a media reporter. Will and I, for those who don't know, go back. I uh, edited Will when we worked together at the Daily Beast. Uh, and I can think of no one better to talk to about this uh, story uh, because uh, he is just an expert in the subject matter. The story being the indictment that was unveiled yesterday by the DOJ of a Russian influence operation. Uh, Will's not a necessarily an expert in the Russian influence operation elements of it, but he is an expert in the people who were unwittingly uh, at the receiving end of the uh, influence operation. And that was a bunch of conservative uh, YouTube and internet personalities who have a huge amount of influence uh, and are some of whom are closely aligned with Donald Trump. So, Will, why don't we just do this in sort of like chronological, yeah. uh, very handholdy way. Tell us what happened yesterday. Start at the very beginning. So in, in the fall of 2023, um, a lot of big deal right wing YouTube stars uh, who are Tim Poole, Dave Rubin, and we can kind of break out who those guys are. Lauren Southern started posting these. It, it, this is it's all kind of bizarre. These like purple light videos where they, they're, they're very like in shadow and it would be like tenet. Tenet Media, <laughs> Tenet Media. And so for me, I was like, oh my gosh, what's Tenet Media? And yeah. then it launched and it was a YouTube channel that had six sort of right-wing YouTube stars posting some amount of content on it. And then it sort of went away and I mean, like, it, it kept going, but it was like, it, it was like, what is the, why does this exist? And this, this was because it was like, all these guys were still posting on their own channels and Tenet was getting like comically low views. I mean, it would get like a thousand views for some videos. And so I was like, why does this exist? Well, it looks like the Justice Department found out. Um, and so yesterday they put out an indictment of two employees of the Russian TV channel RT, who they said were secretly running Tenet from behind the scenes from Moscow, uh, and that that essentially they revealed that Tenet was a has been a Russian influence operation. All right. So the situation is the is it that the Russian influence operation said we want to set up Tenet, or Tenet was in existence and they took advantage of it? They set it up. I mean, this is completely a Russian thing. Uh, okay. This is a very interesting situation. So Tenet's ostensible founders are a woman named Lauren Chen and her husband. Lauren Chen is a is sort of a right wing influencer. She's Canadian, but she lives in Tennessee, and she's a, she works for Glenn Beck's The Blaze. She has her own show. She kind of has her own thing going on. But it, it was odd that she set up Tenet, but then like has been totally behind the scenes. Now, right. what the indictment alleges, she's not indicted, but but it alleges that she and her husband knew this money was coming from Russia, that they were in in communication with these Russians, getting roughly ten million dollars from them. And then scouting out American influencers who could work for Tenet. So they, that's his Liam Donovan, not to be confused with um, a GOP operative who has written for the Bulwark and is active in DC. I thought that name was familiar. Yeah, <laughs> it's I was like, yeah. totally different Liam Donovan <laughs> and Lauren Chen, who um, basically, according to the indictment, know that Russian operatives want to more or less put into the bloodstream Kremlin propaganda. They then go and set up this company, Tenant, and then they recruit pretty significant names to post on Tenant. Is there any evidence that uh, among those names, and we have Tim Poole, Dave Rubin, Benny Johnson, did they know that they were being recruited for this? So the indictment really covered, it touches a lot on specifically um, Dave Rubin and uh, and Tim Poole, and then some of the others to a lesser extent. Um, and it, it describes uh, the founders of Tenet, as well as the Russians, b the steps they took to to fool Rubin and Poole about the source of the money. And right. so it, it, it presumably- What were some of those steps? So, they, in, so Poole and Rubin said, okay, well, who's funding this website? And they they created that the Russians created a persona named Edward Gregorian, which yeah. you know, if you it sounds a little Russian to me anyway. Um, yeah, it's close <laughs> enough to being not Russian, perhaps and like so Hispanic in origin. Yeah, they, maybe they, it can work. they sent a <laughs> they they have a resume of like a guy on a private jet, and it's like Edward Gregorian, and it, oh, he loves free speech. But even then, the Russians they, they had these like errors in it, and so. 
all throughout his name is misspelled in this resume and they say he's into social justice which apparently dave rubin was like hold up you know i don't want to be involved in that let's think this but both of these guys eventually get on board and the reason i mean look there's no evidence in the indictment that they knew this money was coming from russia sure. except having a modicum of common sense because right. the amount these guys were getting paid is mind-blowing Tell us about what it was. Dave Rubin was making, according to this indictment, was making $400,000 a month. A month for four videos a week. For four videos a week. And these videos, this is so crazy. These videos were called People of the Internet. And so it would just be like Dave Rubin for five minutes watches some, you know, blue hair liberal activist. And he's like, this is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> and these videos would get like a thousand views, as I said. Right. And it would just kind of go off into the ether. Now... You know, Tim Pool similarly was making he – he hosted like I think an hour-long show for them once a week, $100,000 per show. And, right. and uh, both of these guys claim they didn't know there was any Russian money here. At the same time, you might want to stop and think for like one second, how does any of this make sense? Right. So the thing that is kind of interesting that you're picking up on that I don't think this kind of been lost in the coverage is that the actual reach of Tenet was – really small. I mean, these guys yeah. had other platforms that they were obviously taking advantage of. Is there any indication about whether the content that they were producing from Tenet bled into the content that they were producing for their other platforms? You know, it's interesting. I mean, Benny Johnson, who folks may remember, disgraced, multi-time disgraced journalist who became a right-wing pundit, uh, he had a show that was on his own channel called In the Arena. And it was like an interview show. And he he hung out with like Vivek Ramaswamy and like Laura Trump and stuff. And that was brought to you by Tenet. So there was some, some bleed over there. It's, you know, the indictment itself is like pretty light on examples of the Russians. There's not a case of the Russians saying Tim Pool do this or something like that. Right. Maybe it happened. Who knows? But, but there's very few examples in it of like how the Russians were specifically able to influence coverage. I guess my theory is that they they because Tenet also produced a huge amount of just like almost like uh, like now this news style content. And so my theory is that Tenet was like we're going to get these influencers, they're going to funnel followers to Tenet, then we're going to promote like pro Russian videos without an influencer attached through that platform. So build an audience, build a following, and then from there do the Russian propaganda. So is there any indication that the Russians were like, hey, uh, we wanted more for this? Like, yeah, there, there, are some really, there are some really, uh, I, I have an article posting about this later today where I, the, the, the Russians sort of faced some classic like media company executive issues. And so so they're running We pivoted to video too early. <laughs> well, exactly. They're like, <laughs> we, we can't pull off this pivot to video. They're saying, basically our talent is more interested in promoting their own social media brands than working for us. <laughs> Stop wasting it on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because they said, yeah. so one of the RT operatives who's been indicted here allegedly said, she, you know, she had one persona, this alias. And she said, like, you know, our commentators are, are they're not posting enough about Tenet. And then people ignored her. So then she invented a new alias that said, I'm the new lady. And I agree. <laughs> 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 That's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that as like, you know, when you were not filing on time, just create an alias. <laughs> Be like, I'm the new managing editor. Will, you better file faster. Um, has Ruben Poole and Benny Johnson and others um, commented on these allegations? Yeah. So out of the five, the six sort of what they call the talent – except for Lauren Southern, who's a Canadian activist uh, who hasn't issued a statement. All, the other five have all said, we didn't know about this, right. um, you know, in, in sort of varying degrees of like, you know, I would say Dave Rubin seems to be much more like, I didn't know about this fraud, whereas some of the others are a little more like, Lauren Chen's great. I don't think she would trick me, uh, <laughs> you know, so, so, but they're all really, they're saying they didn't know. No remorse or introspection about the content they produce, which putting aside the stuff they did for Tenet, um, has on the other platforms been, uh, I want to say parroting Russian talking with, but much more favorable towards what would be conceivably Russian interests, especially vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine. Yeah, I mean, there really has not been, from what I've seen, a, um, a, a like, wait, why did Russia see me as a useful idiot? <laughs> what does this mean? Um, one guy- Have one I been of, doing uh, it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> sort of one of the, like, the smaller fish, a guy named um, Matt Christensen, was saying on his show last night, he was saying, you know, I just promote values from the founding. And like, you know, if that's what Vladimir Putin wants, like, I guess I've been duped.
Right. Well, Tim Pool interviewed Donald Trump. And I know that you've said that there's going to be the largest deportation uh, effort yeah. uh, in your next term. How do we do? How do we do it? Oh, yeah. Tim Pool's a really big deal. I mean, he's. Yeah. Um, let's yeah, talk he's, about that. Like, let's talk about these people in the, in the place they have in the current yeah. right wing media ecosystem. These are big deals. Yeah, I mean, Tim Pool is a, people may know him from his signature beanie. He is a, a guy who like kind of rose, he used to be like a reporter for Vice and Fusion. He, he's, he has kind of like, um, I would say like kind of a skater ethos. And he 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 sort of became like, it was- Is uh, that just the beanie or is there, he actually skates? Oh, does he skate? He skates. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. famously, now, now this is interesting. And there's an article <laughs> I wrote for the post about this too. The same, <laughs> so- Tim Pool. So, so, so Tim Pool is kind of one of these guys who's like, who initially was like, I'm a liberal, but like these leftists are out of control. And now he's yeah. sort of become just an out and out Trump supporter. Um, but he has like several compounds out in Maryland and West Virginia. And he had a feud with, there was kind of this like DIY skate park in this town in West Virginia. And the skaters said they didn't want him there. So then he bought, <laughs> he, he bought the land and for like, for like $900,000. But what I find interesting about that in retrospect, is that he bought this land the same month that Tenet launched. So oh, that's short, true. It's short just nine likes, months Nine months of Tenet salary right there. Yeah. Oh, like three months, <laughs> three months. <laughs> so so that's really like someone who is saying like, I, you know, my ship has come in, you know, I, I have literally like FU money. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. So, so, but like these guys are, are really big deals. I mean, they have millions of YouTube followers. Um, Benny Johnson, as I said, was inter interviews like a ton of big deal Republicans. Yeah. So what's next here? Like, do we know if uh, Lauren Chen's going to like, what, I mean, what happens with her? Like what happens with the other Liam Donovan? Is Tenet still operational? Um, t yeah. Incredibly weirdly, Tenet is like, I, I think as of yesterday, it was still posting videos. Like it's all still <laughs> up. And like, it, like it, it, it's not like they pulled the website down. Like you can pull it up and they, yeah. they still have like the purple videos on their site about how great They still Tenet do the purple is. thing? It's okay. Really, nice. I guess the thing that is kind of like hilarious to me, not hilarious, ironic, I suppose, is that these people are like the primary ones who will say all this stuff of warning about Russia and try and manipulate our elections is a hoax. Like Russia, Russia, Russia. They've, they've echoed the Trump argument that this is all manufactured nonsense. And here they are, uh, unwitting, uh, actors in what appears to be a, sort of weirdly conceived Russian attempt to influence uh, media coverage in the election. Do they recognize perhaps that the hoax is a, uh, is real? Well, you know, it, it, it it's funny. I saw, um, you know, occasional bulwark writer, Christian Vanderbroek. I thought he had a clever tweet about how, you know, these are the guys who see psyops everywhere they go. Right. Yet, yet <laughs> kind of a, a guy in a mask shows up with a sack of money and they go, okay. Like, you Looks got good it. to me. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, at some point it's like, um, it's one thing to say, I was not, you know, I didn't know about it. I didn't, I was unwittingly involved in it. Like I never posted anything against my will. But at some point, you should actually acknowledge that it happened. And to acknowledge that it happened is to, unfortunately for them, acknowledge that Russia is indeed a malicious actor trying to influence our politics. And I don't think they can do that. Yeah, I think at this point, I think there is a lot of, um, you know, I don't know that this is true, kind of like, we'll have to see how this shakes out kind right. of stuff. Um, but I mean, I, I was just amazed with how much information the prosecutors have. I mean, there, right. there's one point where um the 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 founder of tenet uh it needs more money from the russians and they aren't getting back to her and she, ignoring her email and then she googles time in moscow to see if any <laughs> anyone is awake to read her email. what time was it <laughs> oh it was like four in the morning so i think oh, yeah, the, yeah. the founder was presumably <laughs> like ah all right <laughs> yeah can't can't wake up for that um okay well look this is really interesting so last thoughts on like where this goes from here yeah, I mean, I think there's still a lot to come out. I mean, obviously, these RT employees are in Russia. They're not going to get caught or anything. Um, but but I think... You, you don't know, think Putin's going to hand them over and say, you got me. Say, oh, Tenet, <laughs> we went too far. Uh, um, I loved it. It was doing so well, but then the traffic, it was not there. <laughs> but, you know, we'll have to see about, you know, what happens to the founders. Um, I think, it, and, you know, I think there's also the possibility that Tenet is just one bit of this whole thing. Oh, yeah. Um, the, you know, the, the, in the, in the indictment, they talk about Russians saying that 
you know, particularly after the invasion of Ukraine, that they have an empire of influence operations in the United States. And this, for me, this has personally been very satisfying. I, in terms of what it's revealed, um, because I, you know, I'm, I, I try not to be one of these like that guy's a Russian op, that guy's a Russian op <laughs> kind of people. But at the same time, there are these. Well, are things... you a Russian op if you don't know that you're a Russian op? I, this well, is like an actual question. I don't. Well, know. right, and it, it, yeah. it, there are these things where. You, um, but I, I get these feelings like with Tenet, where it's like, that doesn't make sense. How does this exist? And right. then you find out. Well, okay. So then the other thing that I noticed today, and this is where I think it might be going, is David Sachs, uh, the uh, mm-hmm. tech financier, I think he's a tech financier, Trump supporter, was like, all right, all right, let's see how many media properties the Ukrainians are propping up. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be the next one. <laughs> Track the Ukrainian money into the media. Isn't the bi- but isn't the bigger issue here? Uh, about how hard it is to start a website. You know? I mean, I think so. Yeah, ten million dollars. Some of the biggest $10 million, names, dollars, big and, names. And you you just think you got... cannot get anything done? And not only that, like they had, you know, Russian money potentially to prop it up if it was doing well. They couldn't optimize SEO. They didn't really get good on video. Like it's tough. This business is tough. If the Russians can't do it, who can? I mean, you know, one thing I, I thought, speaking of in, the intern, in terms of its internal operations, I thought it was so noteworthy that at one point the Russians were like, you have to post this video of Tucker Carlson in a Moscow. Oh, this is great. Yes. Talk it, about it, this. It, so it, people it, need to understand the, the backstory here. The, the Tucker Carlson video. Tell them about that. Right. So so uh, during Tucker Carlson's visit to, to Moscow to interview Putin, he goes to a, a Russian uh, grocery store and he goes, wow, look how cheap everything is. You know, <laughs> the, you, you know it, it, Moscow is a paradise, you know. We live in hell back in the United States. I went from amused to legitimately angry. Um, So we were guessing what this would cost. Everybody hears from the United States buys groceries, and we didn't pay any attention to costs as we were just putting in the cart what we would actually eat over a week. And we all came in around 400 bucks, about 400 bucks. Um, It was $104 US. And then so so the Russians running Tenet. They don't have inflation. (laughs) Yeah. Then the Russians running Tenet in in their chat rooms are saying, you know, to the Americans working there, they're like, we got to post this. This video is so good. And the Americans are saying, "Uh, it it looks like a little like propaganda. I'm not sure our audience is going to buy it. (laughs) <laughs> Incredible. Some content just goes too far. All right, Will, thank you for unpacking this for us. Uh, you have an article coming out today, right? Yes. The awesome. great Will Summer. Uh, you can check him out at the Washington Post. He is their media reporter. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in to the Bulwark YouTube. As always, please subscribe and share our videos. Will, we'll talk soon. Okay, man? Thanks for having me.